Hi guys and welcome, Gnembon here. Moyang will be holding a conference this weekend where players get to vote on the new mob that will be added to the game. This is exciting because all the mobs presented for this competition seem to be proper hostile mobs, which means that whichever will be chosen may throw off balance the existing hostile mob status quo. So while I'm preparing for some of my new projects to share with all of you guys, I thought I would share with you my thoughts not only about these specific mobs, especially that we don't know too much about them and I'm pretty sure Moyang also have just the rough sketches and rough ideas how they're gonna work, but the implications they may have on the existing mob ecosystem and the existing mob farms. All the mobs that got added since 1.8, like Guardians, Shulkers, Illagers, they have their own specific and isolated areas that they can spawn in, and in many cases don't respawn at all. So they didn't have any effect on the balance of the current mob farms, but the new mobs that they briefly sketched out are likely to change it. I'll start with the mob that in my opinion is the least disruptive, and I'll end up with the most disruptive one. The most normal of them, I think, is the Exhibit D, the Master Blaze, or the Hovering Inferno, how Jeb named it. He says it will spawn as an event in the nether which indicate that it may behave more like a skeleton trap these days, or it just may be a rare type of a blaze that would spawn normally with a pack of blazes in the nether fortress. If they spawn as normal, they will just add to the ecosystem of the current nether fortresses, which will probably mean small or no adjustments will need to be done to farm them on the side as well. If they spawn as events triggered by player presence, they may impact the FK ability of current nether based farms. Imagine the FKing at a pigment gold farm and one of these spawns nearby. It may affect current designs, but it doesn't have to, as land creatures typically abide by certain spawning rules that we can all prepare for, so it means that we might be able to prevent them from spawning. The mob I would place in the third spot is Exhibit C, the Great Hunger, or just maybe a baby Jabba the Hutt, who knows. It's an overworld land mob that would spawn probably with the same conditions as current hostile mobs, however, it doesn't seem very big, so it might be hard or impossible to spawn just creepers, for example. Jeb says it will have the ability to hide in blocks, probably using similar mechanics as silverfish these days, but these little buggers spawn only from spawners, and since they break blocks they hide in, having similar mob spawning in broader contexts may mean current mob farms may start to be dismantled by these little buggers. It's a similar thing to what Endermen do currently, but they are very tall and don't spawn in most mob farms. However, I am really curious about his enchanting abilities and would like to see what they can do. With the second and the first place I had a little bit of a dilemma, but I went to the exhibit B, the Flying Mantis, or the Monster of the Night Skies. Jeb said it will spawn at high altitudes, which is very different and doesn't fit the existing spawning algorithm, which always attempts to spawn mobs within the range of the land and on blocks with solid top surface. Even the existing flying mobs like gas or bass technically spawn on land, they just spawn in caves like you can consider the nether a very big cave. And there's good reason not to try to spawn mobs in the air and its optimization. Implementing any other approaches to general spawning to accommodate these manta ray like creatures may change radically spawning principles and flip all the existing mobs farm designs on their head, but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's more likely that their spawning will also be triggered as an event like skeleton horses, triggered by players that don't want to sleep. That's why I didn't chose this one as the most disruptive one. Does it mean that AFK mob farming will be affected? Likely so, unless we're gonna AFK with the right click mouse button pressed and pointing on the bed. In any case, this would be a big change if they're gonna spawn in the midair, as there might be a different approach needed to prevent them from spawning to make an effective hostile mob farms where all uncontrolled spawns need to be prevented and making empty perimeters wouldn't seem to help in this case. Currently lighting up the surface and the caves is sufficient to achieve it, but might not be in the future. This brings us to the most disruptive mob in my opinion, a monster of the ocean depths. My assumptions are it will likely spawn in maybe deep ocean biomes under a certain Y value like under Y48 I'm guessing, in the similar fashion as Squeeze these days, but counting towards the hostile mob cap. And the problem is that, similarly to the Manta Ray, it would be really hard to prevent them from spawning by placing torches in the water, especially that they would likely spawn in their entire volume of water. This will have an effect on the garden farming for sure, not so much for drops, as we can always say FK in the skies getting away from the water in general, but mostly in the XP farms, as currently the sufficient thing to do is to light up all the caves, and what it may require is to have a proper empty perimeter, empty of all water, which might be out of reach for most casual players. It will also affect all the other farms that rely on the fact that oceans are pretty much peaceful places that can spawn other mobs, if you want to build a farm of any sort. 
and there doesn't seem to be any way to light up the ocean waters these days apart from just removing everything. I chose this one as number one, also because in regular survival people tend to light up all the area around their bases not to have any creepy surprises, as well as they tend to cave around their homes as well searching for resources, which means that mobs will be concentrating around the areas where they still can spawn. And since it would be way harder to prevent spawns in the oceans, if you lit up perfectly the area around your base, the game will try the hardest to have 70 hostile mobs around you at all times meaning that your beach might become very, very hostile. So these were my thoughts on the 4 mobs presented in the competition for the upcoming Minecon, likely to be added in 1.14 or later. I really like how they all have special abilities and they are very different from all the current mobs, and I'm really curious to see how their introduction affects the current hostile mob ecosystem because it definitely will. I hope you all enjoyed my ramblings, and if you did, don't forget to leave me a like, let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about those creatures, and hopefully see you soon in the next video. Bye bye!